In this video, we are going to see what is base width modulation in BJTs, which is also called as early effect. I have taken the PNP transistor in active region of operation and here the minority carrier distribution is shown for reference. Now let's say at this point of operation of this BJT, there is some voltage applied across the collector junction at which we have a depletion width. Let's say this is number one. This is the depletion width that we have at the collector junction. But of course, we know that the depletion width depends on the voltage applied across the PN junction. So in this case as well, the depletion width of collector junction would depend on the reverse bias voltage applied across the collector junction. Now from this point, if we increase the reverse bias voltage across the collector junction, what happens is, so this would result in depletion width would increase. In fact, which would result in the effective base width reducing. So in the initial case, we had the base width as W. Now when the reverse bias across collector junction is increased, the base width would become, let's say, W prime which is in fact reduced. So as the depletion region in the collector junction increases, which would result in effective base width reducing. Now let's say from that first point that we discussed here, if we reduce the reverse bias across the collector junction, the depletion width would reduce, which means the effective base width would increase, which means as the reverse bias across the collector junction is varied, the base width would vary, which means the base width would get modulated according to the collector junction reverse bias voltage. This is called base width modulation. The FX because of base width modulation, the first one is, as the reverse bias across the collector junction increases, base width would decrease, which means the amount of carriers injected from emitter into base as they get transported from base to collector, these carriers, chances of recombining would reduce. So we can write recombination in the base would reduce. Of course, as the recombination in the base reduces, the transport factor would increase. As the transport factor is increased, we know that alpha is given by the emitter injection efficiency times the transport factor, even the alpha would increase, which means for a given emitter current, the collector current which is given by alpha times IE plus ICN, as alpha increases, for a given IE, IC will also increase. Now coming to the second effect, that is, now the effective base width has reduced due to the depletion region in the collector junction increase, which means even the electric field would increase and get into this region. The carrier concentration in the base should become zero at W prime, not at W nerve, which means the new carrier concentration profile in base would look like this. So let me call this the second case this concentration gradient and let me call this for reference as the first case. Because of this effect, the concentration gradient in the second case is higher. So let me put it this way that we know that IEP is equal to AQDP del P over del A, where this P represents the whole concentration change with respect to distance. This partial differentiation at x equal to 0 is IEP and the same ICP is given by AQDP del P of x over del x at x is equal to W. 
Now, because of this change, the W has changed and it has become W prime. Now, if you look at this, because of this base width modulation, when the reverse bias across the collector junction increases, the del P over del X would increase. So if you look at this curves marked here in the base 1 versus 2, the 2 has the highest slope. Hence, the partial differentiation would be higher in the second case. So it's the same value even here that the slope is going to be higher as we increase the reverse bias across collector junction. So what would happen because of this is, so we can take a note here that is concentration gradient in the base increase due to which IEP would increase and in fact even ICP would increase. In fact, if we observe that the reverse bias across the collector junction has controlled and made the emitter current to increase. That's why we call these two junctions as interacting junctions. One junction has control over the other junction to some extent and vice versa. In fact, in this case, if you think about, let's say if I fix the emitter base voltage or the emitter junction voltage and change the collector junction voltage, the IE would be changing because of the collector junction voltage. Hence, we cannot say when we fix voltage that the current at that junction will be fixed. That's why we say this BJT is a current controlled device rather than a voltage controlled device. If you find this video helpful, please press the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and click on the bell icon to get updates on every upload.